Hi, welcome to Getting It Done North of 7. Today's video is going to be about prepping your lawn tractor for the spring season. Today we'll be working on the John Deere LA-165. The very first thing I like to do is take the mowing deck off of the lawnmower. That way I can check all the bearings, clean everything up. I did clean under the deck in the fall before I put the lawn tractor away. But I like to clean it, make sure it's all good and clean, check those bearings, check the belt, and it just gives me a, more room to get underneath here and have a look at everything. This also allows me to take the blades off and sharpen them. And then I'll put the battery back in. I keep it in the house, in the basement where it's warm, and I keep, the, I keep it charged up a couple times throughout the winter season. Okay, the first thing to do to to uh, remove this mowing deck from this John Deere lawn tractor is I have to take this clip, this pin out of here to disconnect it from there. This is what holds the front up. So I'll go around to the front and I'll remove it this way. The next pin I want to remove is about midway back. I have to remove this pin. That's an easy pin to remove. And then at the back of the deck, there's a pin here. And that has to be removed. If I can get a good grip on it. There we go. That pin's moved. And then all I have to do is remove this hook. Is just pull this back. But first I'll go around to the other side and remove all the other pins. Okay, now that I have the pins off on the right hand side, I want to lower the deck to the floor. So you just come up to the handle here and lower it all the way. Now I can remove those hooks at the, at the back of the mowing deck. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the belt off. So there's a pulley here on top of the deck that you can push forward to loosen the belt. Okay, the belt is off and now all we have to do is remove this. There, now the mowing deck is completely unconnected and I can slide it out. Okay, to remove the belt, like I mentioned earlier, this is the pulley here that has to be pushed forward. See how it moves? And that allows you to have slack in the belt so that you can remove it. I just wanted to show that to you. Okay, now I got the deck flipped up on its side. I'm going to remove the blades and I'm going to sharpen them up. And uh, last year, I had a couple of these that had a lot of play in them and what it is is there's a bearing in here and it's on the other side on the top of the deck you can get to them but yeah I had to, I had to replace two bearings one was still good so yeah watch out for that because if they're a little bit loose you know that's something that you want to consider fixing right away so I'll take these blades off and I'll get them sharpened up and then we'll put them back on So there, we got them off, and we'll go sharpen them. Okay, so my wife just called me for lunch, but I'm going to show you how I will sharpen these blades. And I'll get them done before I go in. So what you want to do is you just want to sharpen the one side that has an angle to it. You'd never want to sharpen the other side. A lot of people do that, and you don't have to. You just need to sharpen the one side. And get a good sharp, a uh, good edge on this on uh, this side of the blade, and you do the same on the other.
Yep, that's good. You don't want to do too much because then you, you have to keep these blades balanced. Because once you uh, sharpen your blades too many times, you should replace them with new ones. I'll do the other side now. So that's the first blade done. Now we've got two more to do. Actually, I think this is going to be the last sharpening I do on these. I'll get new blades after this. All right, now we're going to put our blades back on. They're, sh they're all sharpened up. When you put your blades back on, make sure that you see how this flips up here. The blade goes up. That's because it's a mulching blade and it draws air. So you want to make sure that it's up towards the top or the bottom of the deck. You don't want to put it this way because that's the wrong way. It has to be this way with these up, both of them. On each end. Make sure they're up. Doesn't take too long with an air gun. And that was backwards, right? So yeah, everything's good here. Now that the blades are on, another thing you may you want to do is just check your belt. I put a new belt on here last summer. And I'm going to check it all over anyway, make sure it's not cracked. It looks good. Yeah, looks good. Um, make sure your pulleys, everything's tight. And I'm going to give these a squirt here, like this here. I give it a squirt in here to... Make sure it moves good. One thing I notice is I have a bolt here that's loose. So I'm going to go around and check them all. Everything else looks good. Uh, it's just this one. I probably forgot to tighten that up last year. Everything on the deck is good now, and it's in decent shape still. All right, now the deck is fully maintained. We'll put it to the side, and we'll get to work on the tractor. Okay, so now I'm going to put the battery back in, because we want to put the battery in. If you were changing your oil, you would want to put your battery in, start your tractor, and warm up your engine, and then shut it off and then drain the, drain the oil out of it by the uh, oil plug 
and then you want to take your filter off and you want to get a new filter of course you want to put a little bit of oil around the rubber seal of your filter screw it back on once your oil is all drained put your drain plug back in and then top up the record rec amount of oil that you need for your engine now I'm not going to do it because last fall I did this so there's no point in me doing it again but it's just a simple oil change you shouldn't have any issue so now I'm going to put the battery back in okay I slipped the battery back in and I'll put the cables back on so you put your you put your black wire on your negative terminal there we go that one's done and your red one goes to the positive and I'll snug them up. If your terminals are dirty, clean them up. You know, if there's that corrosion on them. Make sure your terminals or make sure that yeah your terminals are all snugged up good and tight. I'm going to check the air filter. And you can see mine is dirty. So we have to remove this. It's clean in here all. Yeah, it's it's fine in there. And you can see that this is dirty. So I'll take this off and clean it up. Actually, this is just the pre-filter that's dirty. The other filters inside, this is just, this just slips around the outside of this cartridge, this filter. All right, I don't have a new filter. I have to order one. I'm going to do that today with this uh, with social distancing and coronavirus thing. I have to. I can't just go get one anytime I want, so I'm going to call CarQuest, order one. If they have one, I guess I'll have to pick it up outside, but uh, maybe I'll have to wait a little while. But you know what? I can clean this up for now in case I need it. I'm not going to need this uh, lawnmower because we're in Canada. I'm not going to need it for a, maybe a month, maybe more, so I'm just getting this done and ready now, so I'll just clean it out the best I can. Mostly all dust. Or it is all dust. And then the pre filter I cleaned up. I'll blow it out to the And we'll just slip that back over. Like I said, I'll order a new one. A new filter, a new pre-filter. Who knows, I may even have it tomorrow. So we'll just put that back in place. And we're good to go for a while until I get the new one.
So everything else here is clean. It's fairly clean in there. I blew out all the leaves before. Another thing is your uh, fuel filter. I'm going to put a new one on this too. When I order the air filter, I'm going to oil, order a fuel filter as well. And I'll swap this out. This one hasn't been changed in a couple years. So I'll put a new one on. Another thing you can do is check your spark plug. Yeah, my well, mine's not bad, but you know what? I'm going to order a new spark plug for it as well. And I'll check this spark plug too as well. So I'm checking the oil now just to prove to you that it's fresh oil in there. Now we're going to do the grease fittings. This is on the front end. So I, I cl already cleaned off the grease fitting, and sometimes there's a this little ball joint in here gets seized up, and if you notice that you're putting, you you got your grease gun on there, and you're put, trying to put grease into here, and it's squirting out the sides, maybe your the tip of your grease gun is not on properly, or that could be seized, and it's not allowing grease to go inside. This one is fine. I'll go ahead and I'll grease that up really quick. All you need to do is give it a couple squirts. There. Give it, give it a couple pumps and it's already coming out. If there was water in there, it would shoot out. And we'll go around and do the other side. Just turn the wheel a bit this way. Clean the grease fitting off. Make sure the little ball... It's working good. It is. And we'll just put the grease gun on there. Give it a couple squirts. Three squirts for this side. Grease is starting to come out here. Now I usually clean these grease fittings off so grass and dirt and dust doesn't stick to them as much. Now this is underneath the tractor. This is a gear that comes down from your steering rod, comes all the way down from your steering wheel, down to here, and it rides on this gear here, which operates your steering. Now you wanna check this gear here for wear. I had to change this last year, because it wore out, and they were it was skipping on the teeth, so what I did was, I ordered all new parts, new gears here for this, and I went to John Deere, and it was really pricey, so I looked, I thought, I gotta find better than this, and I believe it was, I looked on Amazon and eBay, and I believe I got a better deal on eBay, it was either Amazon or eBay, I wish I knew for sure, but just check both for the model of your uh, lawn tractor. And see if you can get it cheaper on Amazon or eBay. But I'm pretty sure it was eBay. So what I do too is I'll put a bit of grease on these gears. So I'll just apply the grease with my finger. You just need to put it on the teeth. And when you turn, turn your steering wheel, it'll ride the grease right through anyway. I'll put a little more on the other side. A lot of people don't do this or don't even know. There we go. Here, I'll take a little bit off of here and put it up here. Actually, I should put it on this side. And there's also some pulleys under here. You want to check in your uh, belt that drives the tractor. 
is under here. Check to make sure that belt is in good shape as well. I put a new one on last year as well. This this tractor got like a a good overhaul last year of maintenance, so that's all good and that's done. But be sure to check your belt there as well. Okay, the tractor's all done being maintained, except for when I have to put the new air filter in and spark plugs. All we got left now is to check the air pressure of your tires. And these are supposed to be up at 12 pounds per square inch. Right now I'm at 10. Perfect. Oh, no, a little over. Just happens to be a little pebble here. There, we're at 12 now. So yeah, just basically check all the tire pressures. Make sure they're not overinflated or underinflated and you're good. See, I just checked this tire here and it's four pounds under pressure. What'll happen is during the winter months, the cold allows for air to escape from your tires. So that's why you want to check the air pressure. Make sure they're topped up. Perfect. 12 pounds. Okay, we're going to start it for the first time of the year and we'll see if it works. Have to choke it. So that's all there is to it for getting your lawn tractor ready for spring. But you want to do that every spring because then it's more reliable. You know, you don't have to worry so much. You can cut grass. Maybe you're cutting lawns for a living. You always got to keep on top of your maintenance. Keep it running and top not. As soon as something goes wrong, go get it fixed right away. Don't let things go because sometimes it'll lead to other problems. So finally, too. I always put premium gas in my small engines. The, the, there's no point in putting in the, the cheap gas because you'll just run into problems eventually. And when I restore it for winter, if there's any fuel left in the tank, I'll put some stabilizer in it and I'll run it through for about three, four minutes. Just make sure that the stabilizer gets all through the system. And as you can see, it fired up really well because I did that in the winter. So there is no problems with the fuel system. So if the, I hope this video helped you and if it did please hit the like button, hit the subscri subscribe button and also hit the little bell so you get a notification when I have a new video coming out. I also I'll put a video down in the description um, of me getting our lawnmowers ready for the summer season as well, the spring season. And also, I have to winterize our snowblower, so that'll have to get done too. You'll find the link down below for that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, and take care. <laughs>